Hi, welcome to Hyperledger, learn how to get involved video. David Boswell, our director of ecosystem, will take you through a how so, to get involved uh, in our community video. Again, I introduced myself earlier, but I'll just say a, a, another word or two. I'm relatively new to blockchain. I've been in the Hyperledger community for about a little over two years and I hadn't been uh, involved with blockchain before. So I'm not a blockchain expert, but I have been involved with open source communities for over 20 years. I got involved with the Mozilla project in 1999 and just fell in love with uh, um, open source communities and working with people around the world. I just find it so cool that any given day I could speak to people like you who are in Africa and then I could speak to other people in Asia and other people in Europe and everybody's excited about working together. And I just find the whole global collaboration thing really cool. So I've been involved in a bunch of, uh, of, of open source projects. So I, um, Happy to bring any experience that I can to bear about how do we build communities uh, in a region or around a project. And so um, that's a little bit more about my background. And do feel free to reach out to me. I'm on the Hyperledger chat. Uh, uh, my handle is David W. Boswell. Uh, I didn't, sorry, I should have included my email address on here. I don't have my email address on here, but it's dboswell at linuxfoundation.org. You can always reach me that way. Uh, um, and uh, I'm available and, and happy to talk. So feel free to reach out. And I, I will start by saying, you know, we want, we want people to get involved with Hyperledger. That's what an open source community is it, all about. You know, if nobody showed up to an open source community, <laughs> there, wouldn't be, there wouldn't be anything there, right? So I don't know how many people who have been involved in other open source communities before uh, joining this meetup or before, you know, taking a look at Hyperledger, but Really, it's an you know when 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 we say it's an open source community, you know we really mean that it's open. Anybody can show up. If if this is something you want to get involved with, you know, that's great. Please please do so. Uh, we we welcome you. And so, just wanted to give a few minutes more about just what does it look like to get involved in the open source community? What are the options and just how how to do that? So. Um, I won't read everything on this slide and I'll, I'll share these slides afterwards so you can go back through um, yourself and take a closer look, but just to, to point out a few things, you know, everything about the, the open source community uh, um, is run by the community. There are Hyperledger staff members who are involved in the project, but we're really only support, right? We don't, none of the coder, none of the developers are employed by the Linux Foundation. The only thing the Linux Foundation does is provide the tools and the infrastructure in the scaffolding so a community can show up and do the work. So everything about the technical community is run by the community 100%. Um, and it's really the community that, you know, leads the project. You know, there is a technical steering committee, which is made up every year there's an election. Uh, and it's made up of those community members who choose to step up and run for for the position and then the community members themselves vote for those so the community it's by the community for the community run by you know led by the community um so i think it's important to also talk a little bit about why get involved because you certainly don't need to you know the code is open if all you really cared about was taking the code you know there, it's on the repository it's free there's no cost you can just get it and take it and use it there's no, you know, there's no requirement for you to get involved. But I, in, in my experience, there are some reasons why people choose to get involved with community. Uh, and I'll just go through some of those. I'm, I think one big thing is that you can shape the direction of the project to fit your needs. So, you know, if you say, hey, here's a project, hyper, this project, this Hyperledger project, Indie, Fabric, Sawtooth, whatever it may be, you're like, well, it does a lot of what I want, but it doesn't do everything I want. Or it would be really great if it did this thing differently. You know, if you get involved and, and submit the pull request and join the discussions and help, you know, shape the project, you can make it exactly what you want it to be, which, again, I always thought was pretty cool. Like, you know, I got involved with Mozilla. I'm like, what, Netscape really cares what I think and I could help shape what the next browser looks like? I found that really, you know, really exciting. I was a web developer at the time and, and I had thoughts and opinions and it was cool that I could show up and share them and people would listen to them. So you really can shape the direction of the project if you get involved and bring your voice and activities to it. Um, another thing is that you don't have to do it all on your own. If you want to get involved in the project, you, again, you're working with other people literally all around the world. So if, if you were on a project and you had to do all the work yourself, that's going to take a lot longer than if you were in a project where you got to work with dozens of other people you know, with similar goals trying to do similar things. So it really can 
decrease the time for what you're trying to do and accelerate the work that you know you're you're wanting to do. Um, and then this quote here is often referred to as Linux's law. You know, the Linux Foundation is based, uh, it was originally started around the Linux project hosted, you know, which got started by Linus Torvalds. And he, uh, you know, the, the story goes, he talked about, you know, one of the benefits of open source is being with enough eyes, all bugs are shallow, which, you know, speaks to that you can really leverage the skills and abilities of other people in the community. So there are some times where you're really hitting, you know, hitting a wall and you're like, hey, I really don't see what's going on here. But other people bring other skills, other perspectives, other expertise. And, you know, very often maybe you're not seeing the, you know, the solution for a problem, but somebody else in the community is coming at it at a different angle and a different perspective and they see the fix and they can offer it. So, you know, that I've seen that over and over and over again. Um, so that's another exciting thing, you know. Um, to really literally be able to tap into the expertise of others around the world. Uh, it's also a really great learning opportunity. You know, you, you can learn a lot. There's a lot of smart people in the community who are doing really interesting things and it is really a great opportunity to learn. You know, that's certainly been my experience. Like I said, I, I didn't come into the community knowing a lot about blockchain, but now I know a lot more. So, you know, I find that to be really exciting as well. Um, and it's great experience, and especially for, for students in the community, you know, that, that experience could be really relevant. If you graduate from college and you say, hey, look, my code's in Hyperledger Fabric, or my code's in the Linux kernel, or my code is in whatever, you know, that's gonna look really great. It's gonna show that you are able to do professional level work that, you know, really uh, um, has been accepted by uh, these projects. And that's, I think, you know, something that, you know, really speaks volumes when people are looking uh, for a job and you can show that on your resume. Um, and interesting, you know, I guess this, this one is similar to what I've already been saying, but you really get to, you know, tap into that worldwide group of people. Uh, and it's fun. You know, I, I also find getting involved with open source, you know, really fun. We did have our large, I'll speak to it again in a little bit, but I, you know, we did have our largest uh, community event of the year earlier this year in uh, March in, in Phoenix, and it was fun getting to hang out with people and meet people in person that you'd only ever met, uh, you know, on, on a call like this. So those are some of the reasons why I've, I've seen people choose to participate in an open source community in the past. And now just to speak a little bit about, you know, how, how to do that. Um, as a starting point, here are some tips. Uh, um, one, feel free to lurk, you know, and by that I mean you're welcome to join a call and not say anything. You can just listen in. And I think that's very often a first, a good first step because often, especially if you're new, it's going to, it could be a little uh, odd to like just jump into a conversation if you don't really know what, what has been happening so far or who the people are or, you know, what's going on. So feel free to lurk. You can join. All the calls are open. You can just dial in and listen, no need to speak. You can join the mailing list and just read uh, the discussions that are going on, the same on chat. And I think that's often a very good place to, to get involved. And after you've done that a little while and you can see you know, what's going on in this discussion, then, you know, then feel free to, to share. Uh, again, uh, uh, you know, everything is out there and you don't need to wait for an invitation. You know, we have the mailing list, for example, and, you don't have to wait for the project to invite you in. Everything you can just step up and just you know sub subscribe yourself, join that call, join these meetups. Uh, no invitation is needed. And then just be aware that we do. Um, it's very important for the Linux Foundation that everybody in the community is respectful and kind. And so to enforce that, we have our code of conduct. So just be aware that if you get involved, you know. I really hope that you will have a positive experience. And if you ever don't, just let us know and we take the code of conduct seriously. And if there is some sort of an incident, we'll certainly deal with it. But in my two plus years at Hyperledger, really it's, it's never been an issue. Everybody in my experience has been kind and respectful and you'll be treated uh, that way as well You know, if, if you join. And although I said no invitation is necessary, I'll, I'll give you the, an invitation if, if if that would be helpful. So please, you know, here, you know, we do encourage you to get involved and we'd love to have you, uh, you know, come to more of these meetups, come to more of the project calls, get, get more involved and contribute. Um, and then again, I don't know how many people on the call have had that prior, prior experience with open source. So if not, here are some good general guides to get involved. And again, I'll share these slides afterwards. These are all links that you can point to it. 
these aren't specific to Hyperledger. These are just general uh, how-tos around open source, but you may find them interesting. So uh, again, make use of this as a resource if that would be helpful. Uh, and then just to go into some of the specifics more about Hyperledger, uh, you know, getting involved in the Hyperledger itself. Uh, the information about our tools uh, are on our website at the link above. Uh, you can also cl click through here on these links as well. But we have a handful of tools that the community uses to collaborate. Um, all of those, you can get an account for those. There's zero cost. You can get an account for, for free. That's what this first link is. Most of the tools are tied into a Linux Foundation ID. Once you get that ID at that link there, uh, that gives you access to uh, most of the other tools that we use. Uh, and then, so for example, we put a page on the wiki to coordinate this meeting. You could get that account, go to the wiki, make a comment, make an edit. You know, that's all open, freely available. You know, please do so. Um, and then I mentioned some of these communication tools already, but we use the community uses a chat server. Uh, we use mailing lists. Uh, uh, and then for the technical side of things, all the code is out there available on GitHub. Uh, and then we have uh, Jira for bug reporting. So again, all these tools are there. If you're interested in any of these, if you want to join the discussion or join the wiki or, or you know, make that pull request, uh, please do so. Get an account and, and you know, Take a, take a look at the, the tools. Um, and then I won't go into a ton of detail about this, but just to let you know, if you are interested in making a code contribution, there's just a series of steps to, to follow. Uh, again, I'll share these slides and you can take a look, but you know, we do wanna make sure that the pathway is pretty straightforward. So just, you know, one, two, three, four, five, uh, take a look uh, um, and you know, you're, you're certainly welcome to, to you know, make those technical contributions. The same with the issue tracking. We want to hear if you're using one of the tools and it's not behaving the way you thought, or you're you're you know you're wishing it did something else. You know you know feel free to submit those issues. And then uh, um, just to speak a little bit, you know, it's not just technical contributions that you you can make. You know, if I'm not a coder myself, but there are still ways that I can contribute to the project. So if you want to get involved, but you're not uh, uh, ever going to make a, a a technical contribution, that that's fine. There are other opportunities. So. Uh, in addition to developers around the world getting involved to create the different tools like the Hyperledger Fabric, like Hyperledger ND, we also have what are called special interest groups, which is really, in my mind, the other side of the coin. You know, if, if all we ever did was just create the technologies but never tried to get them adopted, it, to me, that feels like, you know, the, the community would be kind of pointless. Like, what's, we, there's no point having a bunch of code in a repository somewhere if nobody uses it. So that's what the special interest groups are. We have uh, um, different special interest groups around different industries, and the whole goal of each one of these is to help uh, you know, drive adoption of blockchain and hyperledger in that industry. So, for example, if you are interested in use cases related to healthcare or telecom or, or whatever it may be, you know, get involved. These are open as well. You can talk about your use case. You can talk about you know help other people with the use cases. Many of these groups are working together on different projects to. Uh, uh, you know, again, drive adoption in, in the space. So for example, the telecom group is working on a number of papers about different uh, use cases in the telecom space. So if you're a writer, that's a great way to get involved. Or, or for example, the healthcare group right now is meeting regularly to talk about how blockchain can be used to help address the COVID pandemic. So if, if you're interested in healthcare and, and addressing you know, what's going on with COVID, you know, join those conversations. So you, know, you don't have to be technical to get involved in the community. And I think the special interest groups are a good way for people who are, are not necessarily developers to, to get involved. Uh, in addition to the special interest groups, we also have some uh, technical working groups that are, are addressing some cross-cutting technical uh, uh, challenges, such as uh, you know, how, do, how do we address identity in the blockchain space, for example? So, or or you know, how do we you know, make smart, smart contracts better? So you know, you're welcome to get involved in these as well. Thank you. Now, Rye Jones, one of our community architects, will take you through some of the tools available for you to use. Thank you for your interest in Hyperledger. All of our projects are hosted on GitHub. If you're familiar with the GitHub workflow, then you're already familiar with contributing to Hyperledger open source projects. Many of our projects have good first issues or help wanted tags on their issues, 
to help you get on board easily. We also have the Hyperledger Labs, which are smaller projects, and mailing lists. Feel free to reach out on chat and uh, take a look at the wiki. We are glad to have you. Thank you for watching. Learn more at hyperledger.org.